there friends, it is me, HL My Tech, and today I've got a lesson for you in Tinkercad. We are going to build tops. I love tops because they're fun, they print pretty fast, and they give us a chance to create our own designs that are pretty darn epic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to build upwards like this so that it ends with a point, making sure that we pick angles that allow our design to print without any supports and as little dripping as we can, and we're trying to make a cool top that'll spin for at least 60 seconds. All the designs are up to you. I'm gonna just teach you how to make one at the start of this training video, and then you can make your own cool ones, and I'm gonna show you how to share them with me so that we can actually print them. So, let's get cracking. Let's start in Tinkercad by creating a new design. I'm going to name mine Top MDH, and I'm going to put a 7 after it because I've made many of these, and I'm trying to keep track of which one is which. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to build from skinny up so that the point is the last thing that prints, and I'm going to show you an amazing trick with the cone. When you bring it out, it allows you to change the base and the top radius to turn it into something other than a cone. I'm going to turn it into the post that I'm going to hold. So to do that, I'm going to type the radius, and I want a diameter of 6, so I'm going to put the radius of 3 for both of these. You can try different radii. I've found that 6 is a pretty good handle to hold on to. I'm going to tell you that you probably need at least 20. I'm going to show 25 for the length of my post, and then I'm going to show you how to get the next piece so it starts to grow out. So with the height of my handle, now I'm going to bring out another cone, but I want to hit the work plane and I want to put that cone exactly on top of the previous one. Here's where it starts to get magical. By changing the base radius to 3, I can take the top radius and I can make it 8. And all of a sudden, my design starts to turn into that top that I showed you a minute ago. Now as we work, we need to make sure we make it wide enough so that it prints at an angle without dripping plastic. That's how your designs turn out more and more cool. This comes out at 20, but I'm going to click it and change it to 15 high, just because I can. And then I'm going to take my top radius, and I'm going to put 12 there now, so it comes out at a little bit more of an angle. You can see they're not lined up. I'm going to fix that by going to a corner view. I'm going to press W and switch the work plane back to the ground. I'm going to grab both pieces by just drawing a box that selects them both. And now I'm going to go to a line, and I'm going to keep my project centered in both directions. If you have to click both dots, simply click them. Let's finish this first top by pressing work plane again, and then putting the work plane where we'd want the point to be, and let's come out with a simple cone to make our point. This time I'm going to set my base radius to 4 or 5. I'll actually do 5. And I'm going to do my top radius 0 because I want it to be a point. You could also do 0.5 so it's a little more rounded. I'm going to make it shorter. And I'm going to do that step again where I do the work plane to the bottom. Grab all three, center, and bang, bang. I have made a printable top. Now, I won't print this one for you because it's the exact same one I made. I do want you to make it, but then I want you to be more creative on your next choices. I'm going to make my next one by reusing some parts of this. So I'm just going to hit Duplicate, and I'm going to move my new version over here. All right, for my new piece, I'm going to keep the center post. I'm going to delete the spike, and I'm just going to take this one, and I'm going to change its numbers. Instead of 12, I'm going to make it 15, so it's quite wide. And then I'm going to shrink this down from 15 to 10. So it slopes quite a bit faster. And now I'm going to use a second one of these. So I'm going to do Control D. And I'm going to lift it up a little. So you can see there's about 2 extra millimeters around because I lifted it up 2 millimeters. I'm going to make it a hole. I'm going to select those two pieces. And I'm going to group it. So now my design is a little bit different. It's got a different center of gravity, and it's probably going to spin different. I don't know how much different, but it's going to spin different. I'm going to look for a different point. This time I'm going to use the paraboloid. Notice there is a nice flat spot that I can build my, or attach my paraboloid to. I'm still going to show you another trick. I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to attach my paraboloid right here. 
I'm going to click on that work plane. Notice it's attached to where I want. I'm going to bring out my paraboloid. I'm going to hold shift and shrink it all at once until it gets down to that 6 millimeters. That way I know it fits. Press my W for work plane and go back to the normal work plane. Look at it from the top. I am going to center those. Pop. Pop. It helps if I actually click the button. I'm going to go back to these corner views because then it's easier to see sometimes. And now I've got it centered. The only thing is I need to make this much taller. So I'm going to use fit view to selection so I can zoom in and get a better look at it. I'm going to raise it up quite a bit. And then I'm going to bring back all my parts with the light bulb. Now when I zoom out, you'll notice those are not aligned. But I'm going to fix that by simply selecting them all. Choosing our good friend, the align tool. Looking at a corner. And there's my center on that side. And that was really the only one I needed. Because this, oh, I do need to center this one. So now I've got it centered in every direction. Now when we look at this from the back or any of the side views, you'll notice my paraboloid doesn't poke out. So we've got two options. We could take this piece and just make it shorter, but that risk uh, it not being at a good angle to print. And then we can also click on our point and make it taller. So that would be a successful attempt at making our own custom top. And remember, all I did was cut the same piece out of the piece I had. You could also use the torus to add fanciness to your design. If I take this torus and I'm going to hold down shift and shrink it till it touches my post, if I turn it into a hole and then do the center where I get it all centered, I'm going to center it from this top angle. Pop pop. If I take that one piece and I lift it up a couple, so there I'm going to lift it up one, two, and then I'm going to do control D. And then if I lift that one up a couple, if I do control D without touching anything else, notice it duplicates them right up the post. And then when I group my entire top, I have now got a crazy top that's got a cool texture on the handle. You can use all the parts that are available in here. You could add crazy stars uh, instead of what I did for a peak. Uh, look at this. If you bring this out and stretch it nice and tall, boom, you're spinning off that instead of a parabola. I showed you the cone. You can use the paraboloid. Uh, you could cut out all kinds of different shapes, maybe even use the diamond uh, for your project. But the challenge is for you to make something incredible so you can try and set the record for how long a top will spin. Now in my class, remember the only way to get yours to print is to make sure it's unique. And then also I'm going to ask you to record a little video showing off how yours is awesome. If you've satisfied those requirements, you can ask for me to print it. If I say yes, then what you do is grab the single part that you want to print. You click on the nifty little export button, and we need to export the selected shape as an STL. When you do this, if you followed my settings for how to save where you want, then you can choose the desktop option and choose the empty tools folder and then finally choose where we put the STL files. Now when you put it in here, it should have your name with the number after it if you're on your second, third, or fourth version because that's the neat part of this project is you can try and try again. Just simply name the second one with a little letter A after it or a B or a C or a D. And then once you've done that, we can get it sent to a printer and see how it turns out. Alrighty friends, so now you can see this is one of my favorite projects because I get to see all the creative ways that you can design amazing tops in the effort to try and make one that actually goes for 60 seconds. So have fun, make sure you make cool stuff. If you do have something incredible, share a picture of it, share a video of it uh, on Instagram at HLModTech or let us know in the comments below so that we can tell what awesome things are being made. 
Friends, if you found this useful, please hit that like button. If you have a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.